So we're going to talk about addition of velocities uh, in 2D kinematics. It's a little different than in one dimension. Right? In one dimension, if we had an object moving, say, 4 meters per second, and you threw something out of it at 3 meters per second, the total velocity of that compared to the ground would be 7, right? just straightforward addition. But because we have vectors in two dimensions, it's a, a little bit different, so we want to cover that real briefly. So let's take the example of a little boat here trying to get across the river. We'll have one shore over here and he's trying to get over to this other side. Uh, but the river is moving this direction, okay, as, the, as our little boat's trying to get across. So let's say our boat is traveling this way at 4 meters per second, and our river is moving with the speed of 2 meters per second. And we want to know what's the, the final velocity of the boat total when you factor in the, the fact that we have the boat traveling this direction and the river going this way. To do that, we're going to realize that the boat's motion here, going across the river this way and the motion of the river that way, are perpendicular to each other, right? So it's almost like xy coordinates. So we can use uh, vector addition to figure it out, okay? So to do vector addition, we're going to draw our triangle. So we have 4 meters per second this direction. And then remember our head-to-tail method. So we have 2 meters per second this way. And there would be, let's call it the total velocity of the boat. So the total velocity of the boat is just the resultant of that triangle. So we could use the Pythagorean theorem to figure that out and get that we would have a total velocity of 4.47 meters per second. Um, so Pretty simple and straightforward. It's just, you know, vector addition like we've talked about before. Um, we just need to remember that we have to include both directions. So now we want to take a minute to talk about relativistic versus classical mechanics, uh, kind of an interesting topic. We will deal uh, entirely in the classical mechanics section, but we want to know sort of what are the limitations of that. So in classical mechanics, you know, what we're used to, here's how things work. Okay, if we took a, a boat and it was moving forward at 2 meters per second, and let's say we took you know, maybe a, a little ball or something, and we threw the ball out with a velocity of 3 meters per second. Well, according to somebody, say, on the shore, away from the boat, the velocity of the ball would be 5 meters per second, right? You just add them together. Uh, according to the person on the boat, so from the shore, it would look like that. But to the person on the boat, it would just look like that velocity of the ball is 3 meters per second, which is fine. There's no problem there uh, with 5 and 3 being different. Uh, it's just different reference frames, which we've talked about, um, and that's okay. Relativistic mechanics, or special relativity, uh, as Einstein called it, uh, came around with kind of a, an interesting question. So instead of our ball coming out of here, okay, now it's light. And light travels at a speed of 3 times 10 to the 8th meters per second. So the, the question that Einstein asked was, well, if you were traveling very fast, close to the speed of light, and then you sent out a speed of light, how fast would you measure the speed of light to be? Uh, you know, from both perspectives, both from the shore and from the boat. From the boat, right, that's probably the easiest one. Since you sent out the light from the boat as it was moving, your speed of light, which we usually call C in physics, is 3 times 10 to the 8th meters per second. Now from the shore, how fast would you measure that light going? Well, if we were going with classical mechanics, you would measure it as being 3 times 10 to the 8th, plus 2 meters per second. Turns out that's not right. Um, you would still measure it to be the exact same 3 times 10 to the 8th meters per second. What Einstein discovered with special relativity that was so revolutionary is that light is very unique uh, in that no matter how fast you're moving, no matter your reference frame, you will always measure light to be 3 times 10 to the 8th meters per second. And so there's kind of some funny uh, things that happen with that, some weird consequences that we wouldn't expect, uh, but are kind of fun to talk about. 
What's important to know is that these effects really only occur at very high speeds, uh, or at least are only noticeable at very high speeds. So as long as our velocities that we're dealing with are less than 3,000 kilometers per second, we're in good shape to stick with our classical mechanics and everything that we've learned so far. If we went above 3,000 kilometers per second, that's when we'd have to use a whole new set of equations uh, for relativity. And I want to talk real quick just about some of the, the funny effects that you would see uh, in this case. So one of the funny effects that happens as things get going really, really fast is to you, the observer looking on the shore, the object is actually going to uh, sort of shrink a little, not necessarily uh, height-wise, but it's going to sort of squish and look a lot smaller that way. Okay, this is called length contraction. So anything that's going super, super, super fast actually appears to get uh, a little smaller, at least lengthwise. So it looks like it's kind of compressed. Uh, another thing that happens, and this is kind of a weird one, time slows for the person on the boat. So for example, the person on the boat here versus us over here on the shore would measure two different times. Okay, the, a watch for somebody on the boat would actually run slower than for the person on the shore. Uh, and this is a, a real effect. It actually happens, been proven many times. In fact, we have to use it uh, for things like satellites to make sure that they're giving us accurate times because they're moving so much faster above the Earth than we are down on the surface of the Earth. Another strange thing that happens is actually mass increases as you get to very, very fast speeds. So the boat itself would shrink its time would slow down, and its mass would increase according to an observer on the shore watching it, uh, which is all kind of an interesting effect. And these effects we see, uh, we can get things moving that fast when you talk about like particle colliders and things like that. We have to take these accounts into effect to make them work properly. Uh, so the, these are real things, these are things we've seen, even though they seem sort of weird and outlandish. And there'll be uh, quite a few of those things that we can talk about as we get further along in this course.